In this video, I'm going to compare a budget off the shelf solar array, which is what I have, versus a more designed premium approach, if you will, which is what Harry has got. So what I mean by that is that I went for a budget array, a budget install, which essentially means that whoever goes with that typically fixed price solar array, you're going to be getting the same panels, you're going to be getting the same inverter, no matter where you are in the country, whichever way your house is facing, everyone kind of gets the same thing. Hence the kind of budget nature of it. There's no real design put into the uh, system that I got. But Harry went for, again, a, a more expensive approach. So he went for, I want someone to design the best system that I can get. So I'm in Yorkshire, he's in Yorkshire. We've both got east-west facing arrays, for example. So they've gone, okay then, we'll go for these panels instead of these panels. We'll go for this type of inverter instead of this inverter because of where you are, because the way your house is facing and essentially that should generate you more. So I'm not talking about, is it worth buying better panels and therefore you'll generate more? That, that's kind of a given. More expensive panels should generate more. I'm not about the design of the system. Is it worth paying someone for their expertise? Think of it like an architect. You could have the best builder in the world. If the architect has designed a rubbish house, it's gonna be flawed, it's gonna be rubbish. Heat pumps, it's all about the system design. So, does the same ring true for solar arrays? Is it worth paying that extra? Harry's probably spent a thousand, maybe 1500 pounds more than if he'd have got the equivalent off the shelf approach, which is again, what I did. So. I've got not a full year yet, we'll probably do a final update on this in probably, well, next April, May, but I think we've got enough here to point us in the right direction. Does it make sense to get a better designed array versus just whack it whatever you've got up on the roof? Yes, it's gonna be better in theory for a like-for-like -like system, but given the extra cost, is it really worth it? Are we talking a little bit extra here or a lot more? In what was no doubt a seamless bit of editing on my part, here are the figures, but don't look at them just yet. It doesn't tell the full story for two reasons. One, remember, I have a 26% bigger array. Another thing is this, 3.44 kilowatts. You see, Heatable did Harry's solar array. They're sponsoring this video, but Harry was a customer of theirs before this sponsor started. He's doing this and giving me all this sort of information and this data and his experience with Heatable long before the channel got involved. They are the ones that design the system for where he lives, as opposed to just the system I went for, which was cheaper, but just whack it on the roof, everyone gets the same thing. So if you're after a solar array system or a battery only system, then go to heatable.co.uk. They have fixed price installs for batteries, as in batteries alone. And again, if you want to quote for solar, because it's not just a case of how much does it cost? There are things that need to be tailored to your house. So again, heatable.co.uk for a quote. Thanks to them for sponsoring the channel. Let's get on with this. And why that 3.44 kilowatts isn't actually accurate. You can get microinverters that have a lower startup voltage. So effectively, a little bit of sun will mean the inverters kick in. They will start generating. Whereas with mine, I have a hybrid inverter and that needs a lot more sun before the inverter actually starts generating something. You need a minimum before you actually get anything to use in your house. So the two options that Harry had was lower end or higher end. Let me, let me use non-technical words that even I can understand. So his inverters will actually max out at 350 watts. His panels can go to, I think, 410 watts. So in bright sunshine, those inverters are gonna hit their limit even though the panel can give more. They're gonna clip. He's gonna lose some generation in bright sunshine. But again, we're in Yorkshire. How often does that actually happen? One, two months of the year maybe? But for the other eight, nine, 10 months of the year, that low startup voltage is gonna be of a benefit to him. That's why they chose the uh, microinverters that he's got. They'll clip in summer, but in all the darker months, especially in winter, they're gonna start up before mine even starts generating anything. Mine will say zero until it gets at least a little bit sunny, whereas his will be generating a little bit at a much lower light level. 
Let me just wipe that out. A 2.8 kilowatt array because even though the panels can do more, that's the most that the inverters will be able to provide. If he had, you know, bright sunshine whacking on, whacking down on his panels, that's the most he could generate. That's the most I can generate. So simply put, in summer, I should outperform Harry. But for all the other eight, nine, 10 months of the year, he should panel by panel generate more. I'm generating in April almost the same as Harry is, but I should be way ahead. So panel by panel, clearly, he's at a significant advantage. May, you can see the sun starting to come out a bit. I'm just creeping ahead a little bit, but nowhere near as much as I should be. June and July, again, the sun's coming out, so I'm 50 kilowatt hours in that month ahead. Uh, 28 kilowatt hours in July. August, I'm only 10 kilowatt hours ahead. Again, I should be way ahead of this. September, the sun's starting to go in now. I've generated 207, he's got 229. So he's generated more than me, but look at the difference in the sizes. I mean, it kind of makes sense, doesn't it? If you live in a sunny environment with a south facing roof, you go for a different system to a dull environment with a east-west facing roof. So I guess long story short, do what I've always been recommending people do since this sign kind of came to light. Put the most on your roof that you can possibly physically fit up there and get the best from each square inch of that roof. The inverter type matters, the solar panel type matters. And the solar panels are relatively cheap now. When you're looking at between what 90 and 130 quid per panel, that's an amount, but it's not a huge amount to get another four panels, is it? If you can fit an extra four panels on your roof. Not when you factor in that for this house, it's probably going to be at least a thousand pounds for the scaffolding alone. Then you've got the labor, then you've got the electrician, all things which make up the bulk of the install cost. So if someone's going on your roof anyway, just fill the roof. That's 167 kilowatt hours per panel. That's what I'm getting from my array. So what's Harry getting? 288 per panel. So clearly he has better panels. He has better inverter in terms of where we are. We're both in Yorkshire with dull skies typically. So therefore look at the difference per panel. I have 14 panels, he has eight. So he's getting 288 kilowatt hours per panel on his roof. I'm getting 167. I, it's irrefutable. For me, that is telling. In fact, it's part of me is thinking, do I replace mine? If I could justify it from a YouTube point of view, you know, putting it through the books, do I get someone up there just to swap panels over? Maybe the inverters as well, I don't know. Because that's significant. Remember, these are going to last for 25 years, I think the guarantee or the warranty is. Even if you said 20 years, that's a lot. Right, well, use this data how you see fit. For me, I'm clearly, as I've said many times already, I would go for the spend more to get more approach if I was to do it again. Again, there's nothing wrong with the, what, what I did, with what some people may have done in terms of, well, I went for what I could afford at the time and I'm happy with that. But in terms of pure numbers, in terms of, I wish I, I wish I could go back in time. With hindsight, I would do it differently. You, both are valid options, but if you can afford it, go for a more, well, you know, premium install, if you will. Go for someone that's gonna tailor the system, like Heatable, as opposed to just whack the same thing on every roof that they come across. I feel like I've, I've not wasted money. I could have got more out of it though. I could have got better value. And that's eating away at my inner Yorkshireman. We will, of course, do an update once we've got the full 12 months. But I, th I think that that is essentially going to be the same sort of story. The better system wins out in the end. Right, well, thank you for watching. Um, hope you enjoyed that. And please do subscribe to the channel. It really does make a difference. And if you want to become a member, there's a join button next to subscribe. Unless you're on an iOS Apple device then you have to do it on a browser because that's Apple. But essentially, for 99p a month, you get videos on Sunday instead of Friday, and there are some members-only videos as well that never go public. So 
again thanks for watching see you soon